know that the word father from the acrostics means the one who feeds you, F. The one who accommodates you, A. The one who trains you, T. The one who helps you, H. The one who encourages and empowers you, E. And the one who rewards you, R. You have done this for us and much more. And on a day like this, we won't let it pass without celebrating and honoring you. One of the challenges in the world is not just the problem of leadership. It's the problem of fatherlessness. But we are thankful to God that we have a father in you. Can you please say happy birthday, sir? Happy birthday, sir. Let's do it properly. Say happy birthday, daddy. We love and honor you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so, so very much. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. In Jesus' name. I'm very grateful. Thank you so much for the sacrifice this morning. I intend for us to be out of here within the shortest time possible. Greet someone by your left and right, and then please be seated. God bless you. Be generous. Greet someone by your left and right. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Every year as God grants me the privilege of celebrating a new year and a new season, I um, usually take the time to do a broadcast. This has been a culture that has been maintained through many years. And um, I usually would bring in a few thoughts that would strengthen our lives, the global family, and then strengthen the body of Christ also. So... Um, we thank God for this privilege, this opportunity that God has given. I'll be discussing a few things with us very quickly. And um, just like you heard before I came up, even though it's a birthday broadcast, but it's nothing short of an experience in God's presence. Every opportunity in God's presence is an opportunity for lifting, an opportunity for encounters. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12, please. I'll read 2 and 3. Genesis chapter 12. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3 says, I will bless them that bless thee, and curse he that cursed thee, Let's read the last sentence in concert. One to read. And in thee shall all the families. One more time. Amen and amen. Our world today is full of people who are sad. Our world today is full of people who are depressed. Full of people who are frustrated full of people who are suicidal our world today is full of people who have lost hope lost joy lost meaning to their lives and the reason is largely because people crave for lives of meaning lives of purpose they want to live impactful lives but sadly for many they do not have the opportunity to be mentored and to be shown the way to an excelling life the way to an impactful life hallelujah psychologists teach us that one of the indices that is the major index in fact that is responsible for happiness is progress the moment you see that your life is making constructive progress you are happy you are inspired you are motivated hallelujah i was very touched during the prayer session you know, the many things as uh, Kenny led us through the prayer session. It's amazing to know that your life can be a blessing. And this is not just for men of God. And so I thought to dedicate today 
to share with us very briefly keys to a life of impact, meaning, and fulfillment. Just as my broadcast gift to the global family and the body of Christ. Keys to a life of impact, a life of meaning, and a life of fulfillment. So we have a promise that has been left us that in Christ, beginning from Abraham and through Christ and now to us, that our lives should be blessings. It's not just that we should be blessed in and through Abraham, in and through Christ, but that my life and your life within the span of our lifetimes should be a great blessing. And there are keys. The Bible says, in fact, Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That means in God's design for you and I, there is an expected end. We're not just biological mistakes roaming around the earth hoping for the day that we die or the day something tragic happens. Life can be richer. Life can be fuller. Life can be more impactful. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Jesus was speaking and he said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He says, But I am come that ye may have life. And that you will have that life more abundantly. Amplified says to its fullest. To its fullest. You can have a richer and a fuller life that is even to overflowing. Hallelujah. And so very quickly, I want to run a few keys that I've penned down here. These are keys that have helped my life by the grace of God. If there is anything good that you have seen, that you have celebrated in this life that speaks to you. I can tell you that they are largely a product of walking in keeping with these keys. And I'm praying that someone here and someone who is following, who has been praying and crying for a life of impact, a life of meaning, a life of purpose, that you will find value in these keys as I read them out and that it will inspire you to make up your mind that the last meaningless birthday you ever had was the last one. The last profitless birthday you had would be the last one that from that time hence, every new season would give you a reason to celebrate. Yeah. I have said this and I'm sure that everyone here should have heard it, that birthdays are not just commemorations of the day you were born, but the fulfillment of the reason for which you were born. Many people's idea of celebrating birthday is just commemorating the day. So if you were born June 12th or January 1st or December 25th, every December 25th you celebrate and commemorate the day you were born. But birthdays are supposed to be celebrated on account of the fact that you are living out the reason for which you were born. The reason for which you were born is greater than the day you were born. There are people who don't know the day they were born. Is that true? Yet they lived impactful lives. If you ask Abraham, when were you born? He would not be able to tell you. There probably was no system of measuring it in terms like we know. If you ask Joshua, if you ask all of these patriarchs, when were you born? Even some of our very old people in Nigeria and across Africa... They cannot tell you the day they were born. They can only describe events. I was born when they were fighting. Are we together? That's all they can remember. But they can't pin down. They don't know whether it was a Tuesday. They don't know the year. They don't know the month. They don't know the day. Yet, they lived impactful lives. So a greater reason to celebrate birthdays is not a commemoration of the day you were born, but the reason, the fulfillment of the reason why you were born. Key number one, to live an impactful life, a meaningful life, and a life of purpose and fulfillment. The first key is to have a genuine experience with Jesus. You would think this is a very simple statement. I'm not preaching this is a broadcast to charge our hearts. But I can tell you that the starting point of any glorious destiny... Is at the instance of your encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God. 
There are four blessings you get from your encounter with Jesus. Number one, abundant life. Number two, joy. Number three, peace. Number four, meaning or purpose. These are the four blessings you get when you encounter God. It's important you know this. When you encounter the Lord Jesus Christ and you make him savior of your life, the Lord of your life and your destiny, there are four major blessings. Number one, which is the greatest of them all, is eternal life, abundant life. You are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, the Bible says. But in addition to it, you also receive joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy that is not based on circumstances, is not based on things happening well or not. It's a terrible way to live if you have to live based on how well things are or otherwise. Your joy, your happiness, everything will vacillate according to events. But the believer has an advantage. You can find joy. Joy even in the midst of storms. Joy even in the midst of results. Number three, peace. Jesus said, my peace, I give you my peace. I live with you not as the world gives. The world today is in desperate need of peace. Desperate need. Desperate need. The policies that are formulated across parliaments, across the globe, are to enhance peace. We have war-torn nations today, and regardless how creative the citizens are, in the presence of war and the absence of peace, there is no progress, there is no productivity. There are many nations we know that have been fighting over the last one year. Some have been fighting for decades. Reconciliation attempts have been made, but you know it's failed eventually. And you find out that those nations always stay stagnated. Peace is a very powerful factor. And then meaning and purpose. So the first key to an excelling life, a life of impact, is to have a genuine experience with Jesus. Many people in church, many people who want to live meaningful lives, they do not want to follow this route of Jesus. They prefer to follow other routes. But I can tell you the Bible declares that Jesus is the way. Not a way. Not one of the ways. When it has to do with destiny, actualization, living a life of impact and meaning, it starts with Jesus. He said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am life. Number two. The second key that is responsible for a life of impact, an enviable destiny indeed, is to contend for transformation. The power of a superior belief system. The power of a superior belief system. The power of a superior belief system. Nobody is born transformed. Write that down, please. Nobody. Transformation is not inherited. Nobody inherits transformation. We are born with all kinds of mindsets, genetically conditioned and environmentally conditioned. Please lend me your attention. Nobody is born transformed. Transformation is not a gift. Transformation is not an inheritance. Nobody inherits a transformed mind. Nobody is born transformed. We are taught that there are two major ways that we are conditioned mentally. Number one is our genetic programming. Number two, which is a greater basis for our, our mindsets, is our environmental programming. If you were born, say, in China, you will most likely be speaking Chinese. If you were born in say europe you will most likely be speaking with the accent of a, an european are we together now there are people who were born in the north and it didn't matter if they were yoruba or Igbo or hausa because of the environmental conditioning some of them would speak northern languages with such fluency there are people who are northern born who speak yoruba even more than those who are born from the west so our environment condition us and it's important for us to know this listen to me i wrote something here while preparing my notes a teacup
cannot retain the same amount of water as a large storage tank. A teacup cannot desire the destiny of a large storage tank. It is not possible. Are we together? The difference is capacity. It will be foolish for a teacup to desire the destiny of a large GP water tank. Their capacities are not the same. All of them can hold water. But a teacup may just hold just, just little enough for you to be able to take your tea or coffee. But a large water tank can preserve water. You can take your bath from there. You can use it to cook. You can do a lot of things. So many people are carrying the mentality of a teacup. But they desire the destiny of a large water storage tank. The good thing about mindset is that you can transform your mind. You can be transformed like the Bible says. It says, do not be conformed to this world. Romans 12 verse 2. But be ye transformed. Be ye transformed. It's an active expression. Be ye transformed. Don't wish transformation. Don't hope for transformation. You contend for transformation. I've taught you extensively. Listen. I would say, second to my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, about the greatest gift I know that has helped in making me become who I am now, by the grace of God, is the power of a superior belief system. I will always challenge you, your life will revolve around your belief system. Something you believe about God or don't believe about God can leave you defeated. Something you believe about Satan or not believe about Satan can leave you defeated. Something you believe about failure. Something you believe about success. I have spent my time teaching here and teaching our global audience on principles that help to shape your beliefs. Implanting the wisdom of God. Teachings like lessons from an overcomer. I recommend that again. Go and listen to it again. For instance, in that teaching, I taught you that ignorance is not a demon. You don't cast away ignorance by conducting deliverance over it. That the cure to ignorance is to contend for light. Do you know just having that change of mentality can bring you into victory? So you stop giving excuses. I remember in that teaching, I taught you that it is not what happens to you that really affects you is the meaning that you connect to what happens to you are we together if you recall in that teaching i taught you that what is the difference between falling under the anointing in church and falling under the anointing say in a restaurant all of them require you falling but while you fall under the anointing in church you stand up rejoicing because you have associated a meaning to that experience a meaning of growth a meaning of ascending spiritually so you're not embarrassed male or female young or old but if you fall in a restaurant that is not an impartation are we together it's most likely a proof of maybe a show of mistake you stepped on your feet or something and you feel embarrassed the difference is the meaning so for most of the pain that we keep carrying most of the disappointments you are the only one who is thinking like that the world does not see it your way you look at life from the lens of your mindset let me teach you something you don't see with your eyes you see through your eyes never forget that you do not see with your eyes you see through your eyes that is the reason why a blind man can still see are we together now yes blind people still see they don't just see clear enough to walk like we know with our eyes but they still see their creativity is proof that they still see many people think that they see with their eyes no you see through your eyes you see with your mind your mindset is the lens the vista with which you view life you can look at life from the lens of a defeated person a defeated mindset will call a palace a hut a defeated mindset will call glory shame a defeated mindset will call process delay a defeated mindset will call falling down as a result of learning amateurism you will call it hopelessness but a victorious mindset will reinterpret things let me tell you the truth 
the quality of your life and your destiny in ministry, in business, in career remains at the mercy of the kind and the quality of beliefs that you inculcate. I've done several teachings along this line that our belief systems are largely shaped from culture, our past experiences. When you come into Christ, you must submit your mind for transformation. It's one of the major assignments of the teaching ministry. It's not just to enlighten you, but to correct your understanding. So the mentality that you have is edited using the reference of the word of God. And every mindset you have that is inconsistent with God's way, you allow the Holy Spirit to gently do that work of editing. And then you find out that your life begins to evolve. It begins to change, reflecting that growth in your mindset. I recall teaching you that success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by reason of who you are becoming. And when I talk of becoming, I'm talking of growth in your mindset. My life changed when I found out that if I paid more attention to my mindset than my physical life, my physical life will eventually reflect my growth. The second key that makes for an excelling destiny is to contend for transformation a superior belief system number three the third key that i've seen by the grace of god in my life i have seen in the life of every man who has represented greatness in life in destiny and even in the christendom is to be valuable please write it down the power of value the third key that makes for a life of impact glory excellence meaning and fulfillment is to be valuable in fact i wrote here to be extremely valuable mark 137 mark 137 extremely valuable and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for thee this is the proof of value all men all nations all men does not just mean all humans it means business people seek for thee it means those who are in need of the touch of jesus seek for you it means diplomats seek for you all kinds of people when you become valuable all men will seek for you listen to what i wrote here your value and contribution determines your reward your influence and even your fulfillment let me say that again your value and contribution as far as the lives and the destinies of men is concerned your value and your contribution is what determines your reward is what determines your influence and is what determines your fulfillment how true you cannot have an impactful life when you are not a contributor in terms of your value now we're not called to do everything in fact we're not called to have everything i think i was teaching our lovely school was this school of ministry students yes and i was telling them that there are things i cannot do there are things i'm not even interested in learning there are things i don't want to do i don't want to become it's not part of the script of my destiny but there are certain things i must press onto until i become because it is part of the blueprint of my destiny you're not called in destiny to be everything you're not called in destiny to do everything but the value and contribution that is required insists and ensure that you build capacity until you are able to deliver value extreme value by the privilege of god's grace we are gathered today to celebrate me by his grace i almost feel embarrassed saying this but I'm, I'm grateful to god for that if i did not contend for value number one you most likely would not know me or my life would not be significant enough for you to think that you need to invest your destiny your attention your loyalty your support you see that in driving this vision value is very powerful the cure for a life that is bankrupt of reward 
the cure for a life that is bankrupt of influence the cure for a life that is bankrupt of fulfillment is to be extremely valuable extremely valuable for someone you are that chef we are waiting for give your best to it for someone you are that apostle and that prophet the nations are waiting for give your best to it for someone you're that entrepreneur that needs to come and redefine the economy god's way to someone you are that politician who will rise with integrity and redefine how governance is done in the political space to someone you are that career person that needs to rise to the zenith of your profession by all godly means whatever it is that can make you valuable that you can serve the nation serve the purposes of god make lives better contend for it go for knowledge go for knowledge go for knowledge until you become extremely valuable number four the fourth key that is responsible for a life of impact i'm praying that you are learning and i'm praying that what you are receiving will help make major contributions to your becoming and your excelling number four master relationships master relationships psalm 115 verse 16 this is a very big secret to impact a very big secret to a life of influence a life of grace glory and fulfillment master relationships i have taught you and let me teach you again this morning that this is the world of men please say that after me this is the world of men one more time this is the world of men yes sir it is the world of men the bible says the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord but the earth that is where you are domiciled for now the earth hath he given not will he give hath he given to the children of men anything that will happen in your life will depend on relationships let me spare a few minutes here just to remind you of a few things i've said about relationships i will run them literally like i'm dictating a note please listen that destiny fulfillment is impossible without relationships i have taught you this and that relationships are advantageous connections they are connections that can lead to your glory and connections that can lead to your doom many people have been destroyed today because of relationships many destinies have been built and made today because of relationships i taught you also that relationships are currencies never forget that that they can buy anything money can buy they can also buy what money cannot buy let me say that again that relationships are currencies hard currencies they can buy anything money can buy and they can also buy things that money cannot buy i taught you that the easiest way to succeed in life is through relationships and destiny connections never forget this the easiest way that means if you don't have any advantage whatsoever in your life you feel you're not gifted you feel you came from a background with no honor no glory the easiest way to begin to scale yourself to an enviable destiny is to have correct relationships recall that i taught you that relationships is tripartite your relationship with god your relationship with men and your relationship with things your relationship with god the basis of your spiritual excellence your relationship with men and your relationship with things there is a way you can relate with god that translates to your profiting there is a way you can relate with men that translate to your profiting there is a way you can relate with things that translate to your profiting for instance money and material things there is a healthy way of relating with things and there is a destructive way of relating with things if you allow things to get into your heart that becomes an unhealthy relationship that leads to your destruction i was having a meeting back home just before 
I rushed to come here. And while we're discussing, I just thought to myself again, the power and the value of relationships. You are as powerful on earth as the relationships that support your growth. You are as powerful on earth as the relationships that endorse you. You are as powerful on earth as the relationships that become ladders for your rising. You are as powerful on earth as the men and the women who have agreed to become allies to your greatness. Do not downplay relationships. I taught you how to maintain relationships. Let me remind you that you cannot re maintain relationships until you learn to rise above competitive jealousy. That you only maintain relationships when you avoid evil speaking. When you speak negatively, when you are careless with words, you will not be able to maintain relationships. Because as we say, what goes around will always come around. You say nasty things about people, it will return back to haunt you. Many, many people's destinies have been pegged and even locked indefinitely today because of careless use of words. They said something to someone yesterday, not knowing they were speaking to Joseph in the pit, who would later become Joseph on the throne. Are we together? Practice forgiveness, I taught you. Maintaining relationships. Practice tolerance. I told you the difference. I'm not telling you things I don't do. Honestly, this is my life. Practice forgiveness. Practice tolerance. Forgiveness means to grant pardon to an offender. But tolerance is to factor in the weakness and the limitations of people. Because it will happen again and again and again. Are we together? For instance, I gave in that teaching, a noisy person does not need forgiveness. He needs tolerance. Are we together now? So if a noisy person tells you sorry, and you say, I forgive you, um, you've not been well educated as far as spiritual intelligence is concerned. Being noisy is, does not require forgiveness. It requires tolerance. Because Two or three minutes after that, the person is still going to make noise again. Practice forgiveness and tolerance. Be an active contributor to the growth of the other party. A very powerful key to maintaining relationships. Be an active contributor, my God. Never embrace parasitic relationships. Do not be the only one receiving Never be in a relationship where you are the only receiver. And I have taught you here. Koinonia, bless God for the truth you are learning all. Honestly. Bless God for the truth you are learning. It's true. These are irrefutable principles. If you don't have value to give, give gratitude. Remember? I have taught you. Every time you don't have anything to give in a relationship, give gratitude. Give honor. They are commodities. They can maintain relationships. So anytime you are in a relationship with someone and you don't know what to give, maybe you feel you don't have as much value. Maybe you feel you are not that educated. Maybe um, in terms of stratification, the person is far higher than you. Lavish that relationship with consistent gratitude and you would have matched up your contribution in that relationship i have seen this work like a charm i've seen this work sorry for using that expression but I, for want of word i've seen it work in in a way that can only be termed magical that ordinary people you will wonder you will almost think they are unequally yoked it's just that it's not with unbelievers what is a great ceo doing with this or this ADC. He may not even be so smart. But one thing they know to do. Is to say thank you. And that person will carry them everywhere. And you say why do you love this person? There are many gifted people. And the great person will tell you. A gifted rebel is not an asset. The person who may not be gifted. But has a heart of gratitude. Is by far more valuable. Than somebody who is gifted. With the tendency of rebellion. Are you learning? 
I would prefer a grateful person to an intelligent person. I will go through the rigor of building the grateful person and add intelligence to that heart because that gratitude means a lot to me than a PhD. I can pay the price and build a grateful person. But show me a gifted person who does not have gratitude. That is an intelligent disaster on its way to happen. Be an active contributor. Never be part of any relationship that you are not adding to. Give me, give me. Bad attitude. Give me, give me. On scriptural approach, there are, you know that you are becoming a parasite because people run away from you. They don't want to pick your call. They give all kinds of excuses. Immediately you see that. Let me give you intelligence. Once people start avoiding you, go back. Use honor to open the door. Use gratitude to keep yourself there. Did you get that? The moment a door closes, this honor is looming around. Listen, when you know these principles, life will become so predictable. Table. The moment a door refuses to open, just know that dishonor, knowingly or unknowingly, has found expression there. I usually will have access to the office. I will just open the door and the CEO says, come. But I'm noticing a body language that is not good. How are you, sir? Fine. Um, I'm here again. Okay, God bless you. I'm going. Safe journey. Immediately, I can tell you with the intelligence of a consultant, what is wrong is dishonor. Dishonor is looming somewhere. And if that relationship is that valuable, swallow your pride immediately and use honor to mend it. Sometimes you may not be wrong. You are just disadvantaged. So you'll be the one to reach out and mend it. Waiting until you are right will leave you in a lot of trouble. That is the reality of our world. You will need to humble yourself and mend certain relationships so that you will not be the victim. And then use gratitude to secure your position. Let me tell you something about life. Everywhere you are standing, someone else is praying for you too. If you are careless with that position and you shift, you may not even have a space to return again. This is how destiny is. That God brought a strategic destiny helper. Are we together? That God put you in a position in your corporation. God brought certain uncommon relationships to you. You see, the flattery of relationships is that you never imagine you can be replaced. Until you are careless and you move, someone will say, thank you Jesus. I've been praying for this position of a secretary. You took it for granted. And as soon as they left you, you wanted to come back. But there was no space again. Many people, listen... Mankind as a species, we desire growth. And growth is space dependent. When there is no more space, there is no growth. So every time you are careless with the space God gives you, you put yourself at risk. Say amen. amen. Perhaps someone came to church today to learn this. Go back and re-examine your relationships. When relationships benefit you, drop pride. Don't say, I don't care. I can't say sorry. What is there? I don't want to look cheap. I don't want to be a fool. Unfortunately, you will still pay the price. And be a fool while paying the price. Which is cheaper? Humility or suffering alienated from the privileges that come. Someone is paying your school fees and you cannot say sorry. Relationships. Master kindness. Don't be wicked. If you are wicked, you will not have friends. And if you have those friends, you only reproduce yourself in those relationships. Be kind. The quality of being friendly. The quality of being generous. The quality of being considerate. The quality of being hospitable. Has someone learned already? Yes. It's a powerful principle. A dear senior friend came to my house this morning and great man that i love and honor and respect so much i was so humbled as he took the time to come you know package the gift for me and came and we we're having a talk and i said sir you didn't have to do this i mean you are such a busy person and he said no apostle and i laughed i remembered what i know and i 
there is no wondering why he's where he is you see that every time relationships listen when god connects you to greatness when god connects you to great people he will not maintain it for you it is your responsibility to maintain the greatness did you get that let me say that again when god connects you to great people don't wait for him to maintain it for you make the extra effort to maintain quality relationships now let me tell you this when your investment in relationships is not genuine you can be investing and there will still not be returns let me tell you what that means when people know that the only reason why you are around them is because your hand is somewhere waiting for something to collect every good thing you are doing becomes ugly immediately are we together the beauty of investment in relationships is that there is authenticity and purity in it you must learn this that means when you are saying good morning sir i hope what you mean is i'm ready for the money if that is what you mean then the man will know that you are a psychophant and you are a hypocrite and that greeting will not make sense again so make sure that you are not just a parasite doing things because you feel ah this man has money oh, let's treat him well sir so how are you can i clean your car can i clean your shoe how about washing your clothes i am at your service and it's you are you are speaking to money you are not speaking to the man people want you to love them for who they are not for what they carry the moment people find out you are around their life you are dangling around whether money or fame or power let me tell you great people are not stupid they know those who are around them genuinely out of love and those who are around them as parasites that what lured them to, you to them once it disappears you go with them back then we used to call it friend for food FFF you see that I remember them in secondary school there used to be this group of people they don't know you until visiting day we have something called visiting day when your parents come they bring food and you will see a cruel person who would not even have the the courtesy to say hello suddenly roaming around your corner and you're, what, what are you doing here just checking up on you making sure so that's your mother wow that's interesting looks like i've seen her i know her somewhere it's, all that story is to get a share of the food by evening they have become their real self master relationships remember the four expressions i taught you i'm sorry see remember it thank you god bless you please you've forgotten you will need it oh that when you offend people say i am sorry don't say sorry who is sorry are we together please is a language of courtesy it's an expression of courtesy don't tell someone stand up call me call me back the person wants to help you and you are saying call me back learn to say thank you if someone is kind to you a thousand times say thank you a thousand times don't say i'm saying it too much then it means you want the kindness to stop learn to say god bless you hallelujah now let's go to number five very quickly what is the fifth key that is responsible for a life of impact a life of grace and glory a life of meaning are you ready be a person of character be a person of character you must live by values if you want to be great there is no great person i know sustainably genuinely great who downplayed the relevance of character be a man or a woman of character proverbs 25 and verse 28 please give it to us quickly 25 28 proverbs he that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls let me tell you this you must be able to have control over your words you must be able to have control over your conduct and your behavior you will lose out a thousand times in life if you cannot control your words james spoke to us about the the seriousness of this tongue you see there are many people 
who close the gates of their destiny because of careless use of words. They said things that should not be said and it went round and got to the ears of their helpers and those doors became shut. How about your conduct? Protocol is the expected behavior in any environment. Let me repeat that again. That protocol is the expected behavior in any environment. There is a way to behave and don't say it does not matter. There are many people who don't behave well. You go to an occasion, the organizers have not eaten. You are the first. You just put your hand and say, am I allowed to touch everything? You touch both the ones that are for you and the ones that are not for you. Bad behavior. And while people were praying, you were praying. They were already admiring you for your spirituality. And you rubbish that, that thing in at the table. What demons could not do. Bad behavior has now done. You see that now? Are we learning? It's very important. Be a person of character. A person of character. Be disciplined. Be diligent. Restrain yourself. Know when to speak. Don't cheapen your words. No. Let your words carry. Your words are valuable. When you spill your words out carelessly, a time comes nobody takes you seriously, even if you are serious. Do you know there are people, if they are tell, even if they are telling you somebody died, you have to say, show me the dead body first. Because they have a track record of their words have become so cheapened. Nothing they ever say is taken seriously. Be a person of character. It's often said the anointing will take you up. But it is character that will maintain you. The anointing will take you up. Bring you greatness. Bring you to the table of greatness. But if you lack character, I give you an assurance under God. Nobody will follow you. It's a matter of time. You will be leading yourself. Nobody, listen... People don't just look for spirituality. People don't just look for intelligence. They look for character, stability of mind. Nobody wants to follow a leader who is boisterous in your emotions. You are not connected. There is no stability. You are so unpredictable. People cannot say, no, as touching this matter, I can know that this is where this person stands. If you don't have character, you will not go anywhere. Are we together? Someone keeps money with you by evening. You've taught something from the money. And he said, don't worry. I know that it's just how life is. No, you have to be disciplined. Be a person, a man or a woman of character. Are we learning? Let me give you the final key. As far as a life of impact is concerned. And I'm drawing this from my broadcast last year. The Spirit of God asked me to still remind you on that. And that's why I'm bringing it here. The third, the sixth key that is responsible for a life of impact is the power of purpose. The power of purpose. The power of purpose. I taught you last year, if you recall, that purpose answers the question, why? It is one question you must ask, why? Why do I want fame? Why do I want increase? In fact, motif is a subset of purpose. You see, if your motif is corrupted, it's because you did not even know what the purpose was in the first place. My greatly revered mentor of blessed memory, Dr. Miles Monroe, would say, when the purpose of a thing is not known, he says, abuse is, yes. The word abuse means abnormal use. Use outside of its predefined purpose. Why do you want fame? Why do you want wealth? Why do you want anointing? Listen, desires and pursuits only become profitable to us when they are connected to purpose. This is powerful. Desires and pursuits, any desire at all and any pursuit in life only becomes profitable when it is connected to purpose. 
I want to be great. Why? Apostle, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a billionaire. Why? I want to be like you. Why? If you cannot ask, answer the question why, then you do not qualify to step into certain realms and certain dimensions in destiny. Asking the question why, I wrote here, is a powerful secret. Do you know what it does? It will help you tame your insatiable appetites. The question why always helps men to tame our insatiable appetites. There are appetites we have as men that it seems like it can never be satisfied. The question why brings, it tames your appetites. It also tames from your life the temptation of vain living. The temptation of vain living. A man who cannot consistently ask the question why is a man who does not have control over his destiny. You will do anything that looks good. You will go anywhere that looks right. Why? Join this club. Why? Be part of Koinonia. Why? If you can ask the question why, you will be delivered from many troubles in your life. There are many people today who have gotten into trouble and they cannot answer the question why. Why did you join that chariot? Why did you join that association? Are we together? Why? Asking the question why is a secret that can help you tame your appetite. All things are lawful. Please look at me. But not all things are expedient. I have taught you that when Satan brings evil and you're not interested, he will bring good that is not connected to purpose. The most important thing is he wants your destruction. You must learn to ask the question why. I want to go to America. Why? To Canada. Why? To US. Why? I don't want to go. Why? I want to be a serious Christian. Why? I'm not interested in the things of God. Why? Always connect purpose. Once purpose is in place, then you are not afraid of pursuing things. You are not afraid of desire. If you tell me, Apostle, I want a billion naira. I'm not going to say you are joking. A billion. You spell it by yourself. No, I won't do that. I want a billion naira. I'm going to ask you the question, why? I'm just tired. I want to live a better life. Then you don't need a billion naira. No. You don't need a billion naira for a better life. You see that now? Why do you need a billion naira? I'm tired of poverty. I need to be rich. Too small a reason. Most people do not. They can't answer the question why. Why do you want the anointing? So that me too. People will know that I'm not a very a small person. Too small a reason. Beyond personal ambition, beyond the desire to outshine, beyond the desire to be successful and celebrated, we must seek to see Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. That must be your biggest why. The why that drives your life. The why that literally pilots everything you do. Beyond personal ambition, which is not necessarily bad. Beyond the desire to be great, which is not necessarily bad. Beyond the desire to be successful. Beyond the desire to be celebrated. Beyond the desire for fame, for things, for progress. We must seek as the highest why, the highest priority. To see Jesus Christ revealed in and through our lives. And to see Jesus glorified. Are we together? Listen to me. I wrote something here and I want you to listen. Manage the obsession for self-glorification. Manage. This is a message that is very important, especially for our world today. Manage the temptation, the craving for self-glorification. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. 
my one desire that you be praised that you be praised that you be praised as a person I'm not interested in any association any group any pursuit that cannot afford me the opportunity to reveal Jesus and bring him glory that's why I'm not part of many things I'm not part of many associations once I cannot find in it an opportunity to reveal Jesus I can wave you from afar carry your trouble and go my entire life revolves around revealing Jesus did you hear what I said Come and join this. Come and some of us are in all kinds of groups until you found out now you're on your way to hellfire. They call you good. It doesn't have to be demonic groups. You are part of everything that has choked your opportunity to reveal Jesus. When you should go to church, that's when they are having their meeting. And because it's not a religious um, group, they say you need to be there. They made you secretary. You later became chairman. Anything that interrupts an opportunity to be a serious Christian, to love Jesus, to build, to grow, to reveal him and glorify him is vanity as far as this life is concerned. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. Let me tell you this. Edit the activities in your life. Every activity and every pursuit in your life that is not directly connected to the revelation of Jesus and the glorification of the same, let it mark time from today. And you will find out that you have enough space. There are not many things we are supposed to do in life. It's the vanity of our lives that has created so many activities in our lives that choke us and we cannot even sleep. Our world is full of this statement, I am busy. And if you edit the things we are doing, I can tell you sincerely, without exaggeration, over 80% of our human activities on earth are unnecessary for our excelling and unnecessary as far as destiny is concerned. Just luggages that were choked upon that caravan called destiny. It's time to put some of those things down. There are many luggages you have been carrying. Throw them away. They have no value and no relevance. Not in your today. Not in your becoming. Not in your excelling. Not in your eternal destiny. Edit vanity from your life. So that your life is efficient enough. That everything you are doing has a direct bearing on the revelation of Jesus. I made a decision many years ago to decongest my life. I found out that there are many activities upon the face of the earth that are simply time wasters. You wouldn't know how much they waste your time until God helps you to progress in age. One day you will get up and say, so what returns have I gotten for investing my time in this mundane activity? Seven. Let me give you the final key. Understand the brevity of life on earth. Mm. You want to live an impactful life? You want to live a life of meaning and fulfillment? Not without this understanding. Understand the brevity of life. Let me tell you the truth. Life is deceptfully short. 20 years looks far till you cover it. 40 years looks far till you cover it. 50 years looks far till you cover that distance. 80 years looks far till you cover it. Do you know? The celebration of birthdays is not celebrating 
how far you have come is also acknowledging how much is left did you hear what i said it is not just celebrating how far you have come listen it is celebrating how much is left so if you are 50 years today and you are supposed to live 80 years on earth you are not celebrating 50 years you are celebrating 30 years remaining if you are supposed to live 70 years and you are celebrating 65 years what you are celebrating is five more years how foolish do you want to live when you have five more years to live i was watching one video of reinhard bonke five years ago and i said do you know five years ago as at the time he was saying it, maybe he did not know that he had only five years there are people who as at january they died in may they didn't know that when they celebrated new year it was five more months to live how would you live if you knew not to make you afraid that this is the last joshua selman's birthday you will see if you are afraid of death better come for an altar call when i make one imagine that by some way god reveals to you now that by december i will call you home that means this is june abi july august september october november december you have six more months then somebody who does not know where he's going comes to waste your time and until october you are still roaming around life and destiny listen to me one day you will not be here accept it or not one day you will not be here every dead body on earth is a sermon a constant reminder that the clock of destiny is ticking and one day it will stop did you hear me every dead body you see today from today see it as a sermon don't just see it as a corpse every dead body some of those dead bodies were stubborn while they were alive some of those dead bodies were arrogant they said they would not die some of those dead bodies carried stubborn spirits some of those dead bodies carried arrogant spirits some of those dead bodies carried wicked spirits some of those dead bodies carried godly and prepared spirits but in any case it's now a dead body you don't call a dead body a preacher you don't call a dead body an arm robber let me tell you the truth my life changed when i began to walk in the consciousness of the brevity of life it didn't put fear it just brought an awareness an awareness in me when people die especially people around at least my ministerial sphere of influence i'm usually the first they reach and they say so 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 person has died you see that and while i condone with the family and console them i use that dead body as a message again there was a day that dead body had a sermon too there was a day that dead body had a preacher say one day you will die and the dead body said yes now that dead body is the one who is being used as the sermon let me tell you the truth we are not called to fear death it's not a wise way to live we are called to be aware that life like the hymn writer would say life at best is very brief like the falling of a leaf are we together like the binding of a sheep life at best is very brief whether you listen and take me serious or not here connected and following across the globe one day if christ tarries your children or your grandchildren will have a cause to be surrounded around your corpse and you will be dog six feet and they will say here lies the body of xyz the question is where you will be when all that is done because this body you see returns to dust but cessation of living never happens you never cease living dimensions change this is why it is foolish to live life 
as if you indefinitely have the power to decide whether you will go or not it's not true it's not true it's not true there are many people who were on earth do you know there are people who were alive on sunday as i was preaching but today they are gone this sunday i mean sunday maybe they were preparing to connect online again and listen next sunday and by this morning it was over already so teach us to number our days teach us to number our days do you know when you have this understanding you will focus on the things that matter and you will not waste your time and your life on vanities are we together many of us today will not love the lord and will not serve the lord because of mundane things money house car by the time you die that car will not go with you by the time you die that promotion will not go with you i'm not saying to be earthly irrelevant but i'm saying burn it in your heart carry this consciousness that every other thing only find its relevance provided you are alive so that in being alive in order of priority the first thing you should secure is your state with god that i have peace with god and that you get to a point where like paul you say for me to live is christ and to die is gain i wonder how many people can make that statement in this place that in truth for me to live is christ and to die is gain hmm. hallelujah if christ tarries i don't want to get out of this world as a defeated loser a failure no no I want to design my own exit by myself that i would conquer life finish my assignment with joy be a blessing to creation and with health and vitality and with joy i would look at life and say i came i saw i conquered you sign out with honor and leave yes sir to be absent in the body is to be present with the lord all that fear you are seeing is only those who are watching you as a dead person that transition is so instant you will not even know what is happening i can tell you that for free all the pity you pity dead body is because you are alive the person transiting the is, is instant that's it like the blinking of your eye realities change immediately and what becomes the 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 compass to where you go after then is your believing in jesus christ your walking in his ways and living a life of meaning i will not be so foolish as to make many things a priority above jesus no till he returns or calls me home here in the love of Christ, I stand till you return or call me home. Here in the love of Christ, I stand till he returns or calls me home. I want to give thanks and gratitude to God Almighty. I want to thank Him. Lamentations chapter 3 from verse 21 says, It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. It says, Because His compassions, they fail not. I am today a product of God's mercy. And if there is anything you have seen that is worthy of celebration, I owe it to God. I owe it to God. I owe it to God. I owe it with all my heart to God. I want to thank God for life. I want to thank God for health. I have traveled by road, traveled by air, and he has preserved me. I've passed the same pathway that others went and died. I want to thank him for that grace.
Hallelujah. I also want to thank the Koinonia Global Family. Thank you. Thank you. And I mean this from the depth of my heart. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your loyalty. Thank you for your support. Thank you for upholding the vision from Nigeria to UK to America to Canada, several parts of Africa. Thank you. It is one thing for God to call a man. It's another thing for you to understand your call and to be willing to give your best. But it is a great blessing when God grants you access to the hearts of men who love you sincerely and believe in you. I pray the prayer. Thank you so much. I love you too. I pray the prayer unto God. Listen carefully. And I told God something. I said, God, my own commitment is I will be the best of a shepherd, a teacher, a father that I can be to my people. But give me the gift of good and faithful people. All these headaches that men of God go through in ministry, I'm, I'm tired of. Everybody has his share of his own, but your share can be small. It's a cause when your share of trouble is so much. Trouble from today. You don't trust anybody. You don't know who. I don't want that, that, that trouble. And God answered that prayer. I'm grateful to you. Thank you, Koinonia. Thank you for your diligence, your discipline, your love and loyalty. I want to thank the body of Christ. Part of my assignment is to the body of Christ. I have an expression of my mandate for living um, to the body of Christ. Helping to bring the body of Christ to a state of balance, maturity, love. And I really want to thank the body of Christ in Nigeria, the body of Christ in Africa the body of Christ all over the globe. I hear, I hear of preachers who were driven out of certain nations. I hear of preachers who are only accepted in certain regions. There is no region in Nigeria that has rejected me. There is no region in Nigeria that has rejected me. By the grace of God, I've been everywhere in this nation. No region at all. There is no region in this nation that I do not have friends, good people, faithful, sincere people. There is no nation I've traveled to across Africa that has rejected me. It's been with graciousness. It's been with love. Hallelujah. I am humbled and even amazed at how far this ministry and the teachings have gone. And the nameless, faceless people who have broken this barrier of regional divides and carried these teachings cross-culturally across the globe. I am grateful. Thank you. Thank you for helping me serve Jesus. Thank you for helping me love Jesus. Thank you for helping me live for Him. Hallelujah. I must say this. The body of Christ, that includes the fathers of faith within this nation. Thank you for your advice, your counsel, your rebukes, your correction, your instructions in righteousness. I want to thank all the senior men of God in this nation. I honor you in your various capacities. I want to thank God for my contemporaries in ministry. I thank God for the privilege of partnership in various ways. And I want to thank God for those that God has brought that we are raising. Sons, daughters, protégés, mentees. Thank you. Thank you for your love, your loyalty. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wow. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. We believe that this message has done good to you. And... Um, we believe that God is transforming you and setting burdens in your heart even as you've watched this video today. Please, if this is your first time of connecting with us, do so by subscribing to this channel, 
click on the notification bell so that you can get daily uploads like the video and share to your loved ones because god is set to do wonders in your life and we believe that god is changing your life for good in jesus name amen amen bless hallelujah